Hello everyone, I'm Norman Wahlberger and we're playing Go. Today I want to show you a classic game from Imperial Shogun era Japan, the 1600s, between two players called, one is Haninbo Sansa, and the other one is name is Rigen, or Rigen, R-I-G-E-N. Now, Honinbo is an honorific title that's been around for a long time, uh, signifying a player of the very highest rank in Japan. And uh, so this Sansa was, uh, was one of the most prominent players of, of that time and a historically important uh, player. So we're going to play through this game, and I'm going to give you my somewhat simplistic uh, amateur commentary on what I think is going on. Um, these players are much better than I would be, so there's probably a lot more uh, in their thinking, behind their thinking, especially they're probably spending quite a lot of time on, on the moves. I'm just going to go relatively quickly just to give you an, an overall feeling so you can watch the flow of the game and maybe you can admire the uh, the pleasant uh, nature of the moves. So Black is, um, is Rigen, okay, and he... Um, plays here and uh, then we have white playing here and black here occupying these three four points in the corner and then white responds here preventing black from making a nice corner enclosure then black rem moves into the unoccupied corner and white also again prevents him from making what's called a shamari or corner enclosure so generally speaking white is doing this um, to to prevent black from simplifying the game so if black gets a one or, or maybe even two corner enclosures then that simplifies the game for him and black has an advantage because he's playing first okay so then what happens is um, black takes the remaining point in this this corner here. Instead of making the you know, shamari or the corner enclosure here, he chooses to uh, prevent white from making a, an enclosure. And now white uh, plays here. So saying, okay, black, you can make this corner enclosure if you like, either by playing here or here. But in that case, the, the wall formed by this corner enclosure is naturally looking in this direction. And so after black plays here, next move that black would play would be just around where eight is now so the fact that white is playing here somehow reduces the value of this move for black it's a kind of a subtle thing and it also uh, of course is a very large extension from this um, stone here so white is mapping out some territory on this side okay black says okay i'm not going to make a lot of territory perhaps in this direction but i'm going to make it there for a bigger corner enclosure so i'm going to be a little bit more greedy and this is a, a large scale corner enclosure which um, doesn't capture the corner very very securely but at least maps it out on, on a big scale and white now plays right up against it um interesting it's kind of strong move essentially threatening an, an invasion here uh, and to disrupt um, Black's attempt to making a corner and also providing some kind of um, extension to this stone here. So if, if White can play out in this direction here, uh, then uh, he's again looking to um, build on a big scale. And Black is going to prevent that. Okay, So Black does not want White to play this move here or maybe some attachment here, scoping out a big territory. So he plays this shoulder hit. Now um, white is going to submit and well just play passively for a little while just to create some solid territory on the third line and black is also not unhappy uh, pressing white towards uh, this stone here. Now this stone is less important than it, it was before because now uh, this whole territory is on the third line. It's not as big a scale as it could be. So black is probably quite happy, uh, especially since black can probably now uh, play an extension out here. But actually before he plays here, he's going to play a, a pincer move against this white stone here. Okay, this white stone then is deprived of a base on the side here. So white has to worry about this stone. So white jumps out, and then a natural response to that, good shape, is for black to play here. Again, putting pressure on these uh, white stones, but also looking to build here. And so black is wanting to uh, utilize this wall that he's just built here. Okay, so he wants to make a, a biggish territory, if possible, over here on the right-hand side. So what's going to happen? Well, 
first of all, White is going to say, okay, first of all, I'm, you pressed me down here. I'm going to press you down over here and also create a, some kind of a large scale here. So the, we uh, see a similar pattern. This is a very um, common kind of thing. Uh, pressing the opponent down, giving them territory, but just not on a very big scale. Okay, so White has, has done that. Now all those stones, the, the black stones here on this top line are on the third uh, line. That means there's not really a lot of potential for black to make a big territory on this side. The uh, the remaining uh, points that are quite big, white wants to solidify this potential territory here, but even more importantly, he wants to prevent black from playing a, a key point in here somewhere to, to really uh, scope this thing out on a big scale. So white plays here an invasion. Okay, and this also, you know, is in some sense a, a, something of a preliminary to an attack on these stones. Right? These stones don't really have a base yet, so if White can play one or two more moves, um, then these stones have to start worrying about their um, their health. Okay, so but in any case, this White Stone has separated these Black groups, so Black is going to you know, press here, or not press, just a block here, preventing white from sliding into the corner, making a base for himself, and also uh, basically attacking these two white stones a little bit more. Okay, so the usual response to this kind of thing is, is, is to go down here, okay, that's one option. Um, or, but if, if white plays here, then black will ignore it and, and, and probably play somewhere, uh, you know, here or, I don't know, around here. Um, white does not want to sort of lose the initiative, so white plays this move here, which sort of forces black to, to defend. And then white gets an Atari here, which black has to respond to. And then white plays loosely. White is not going to come back and defend this cutting point. White is rather wanting to, to come out. Um, white is looking to, to play a, another move here, but he wants to solidify this group first. So he's going to lean on this black stone. Okay, black is not going to make that easy. And then white comes out and black defends the cut. Okay, very important to defend the cut. Otherwise, if, um, if black say plays here, then white can cut here. And then um, black more or less has to give white uh, the stone, and that's a reasonable territory, and then white is completely secure. Okay, so uh, black plays here to prevent that from happening that keeps the pressure up on these uh, stones here. But nevertheless, white has enough strength here now. It's not completely safe, but there's enough sort of possibility for some eyes. There's sort of a, an eye in here, and there's possibly you know something of an eye up here. And white also has access to the center. So he's not too worried. He's saying, okay, now it's time for me to apply pressure on these black stones. So let's start by preventing black from coming into the corner where it's easiest to make some eyes. Okay, black is going to do the same kind of thing that white did, um, play some forcing moves to strengthen him on the, on the outside. And now he's going to defend these cuts. And he's going to defend the cut in a strong way by playing here. So now there's still a cut here, which white can't uh, just cut because then black can just easily take the stone. You see, that's, that's captured. But um, white uh, has other possibilities, but white leaves them for now and says, okay, let's invade the corner here, okay, disrupting black's um, situation here. So white's going to see how black responds here before he continues uh, with uh, what's going on here. So white doesn't have to worry too much about this stone here. You might think, well, this is a very isolated stone. And that's true. But white has, has the option of playing an extension uh, over here. And he also has the option of um, playing a uh, one-point jump. And he also has this peep here, which will help him um, move out also. Okay, so white is playing in this corner to prevent black from making a reasonable uh, corner territory. And then... Um, White, um, I think maybe um, if you were an amateur player, you, you would be inclined to go like this, sort of connect out to this stone, and that's quite reasonable. Um, but white is playing strongly and plays like this, okay? Um, white can play strongly because 
these black stones actually don't have any friends nearby. So there's this white stone here that's preventing this black group from you know going in this direction. And there's this white stone here and these strong white stones here also preventing black from going in this direction. So white is looking to, to maybe cut here, in which case there will be a fight. And white thinks that he can gain an advantage because this is basically his sphere of territory. He's got these supporting stones here. He's got these stones and, and this, these stones here are also sort of closest in this direction. Okay, so what black could, could play here, okay, that's sort of like solid, um, maybe a little bit um, boring. So, so black plays here, wanting to lean on this stone here at the same time of sort of um, dealing with uh, this cut here. So white is going to, so th this, um, this move here has prevented the possibility of a white connection. So white has to uh, make sure that these stones here survive. So he's gonna make a base, okay? And um, there he's made a base. And and now black plays out here. So black has lots of cuts. It has a cut here. Okay, has now no longer a cut here because white can't cut here because he can just be taken. But this stone also um, you know, threatens to swallow up this white stone here. So um, what's white going to do? White's going to ignore things and make the base for this stone up here. So white has... Um, essentially accomplished what he wanted to do. Uh, he has stolen the corner territory from Black. And Black's wall that has been created is, first of all, it's a little bit thin. Actually, it's quite thin because of this cut here. And it's also facing towards this white stone here, which is sort of in the, in the key point to prevent Black from having a nice extension in this direction. So probably White is, is reasonably happy with the result here. It says, okay, I don't have to worry. This stone here, not so important. This group is already strong. I could give this stone up. It's more important to establish a base. This is a, a big territorial move. It also prepares for an attack on this Black stone. Also prepares for a slide down here, which is also a big territorial move, sort of threatening a cut. Okay, so Black prevents that slide by um, pushing up against white. And there's a proverb that says when someone attaches to you like this, you should um, stand up. In other words, just uh, support your stone by by um, making a direct um, move um, sort of in the opposite direction or uh, opposing direction to the attachment. Okay, and now black, however, is not going to easily allow white to connect these groups. So really good players are really conscious of the connectivity between their groups, okay? They know that if you can separate two groups, even though they may look reasonably healthy, still there's then the possibility of attacking either one or perhaps both of them uh, simultaneously, okay? So it's a kind of a, a principle amongst uh, stronger players to, to prevent your opponent from easily linking up groups. So you want to sort of drive wedges between them to keep them separated so that they're weak or weaker. Okay, so white is going to um, play here, which, um, what does that do? So if, if black plays here, then white has this Atari, okay? And then black has to connect. And then white has this disconnect. Now this stone, which has been played by black to disconnect white is now disconnected from the the black group and now this stone here can be um seriously under attack because you know the the surrounding white groups are reasonably uh, strong so this is maybe something that um black does not want to have happen so what's going to happen black plays this move first that's an atari on that white stone okay white's going to connect that because he doesn't want to have that group disrupted and then black plays here black says okay white if you want to come through here and uh, threaten to disconnect that's fine if you want to take this stone here that's fine i'm going to concentrate rather on the on surrounding this right one more stone for black say in this direction or over here will surround this white group and then the white group is effectively dead it doesn't have two eyes so white has to come out okay white doesn't have two eyes along the base uh, white can make one eye by playing here, uh, but that's about it. White uh, doesn't have room for two eyes, so white has to come out. So now black is going to, well, make life a little bit harder, so white can uh, come out like this. You might think, what happens if black um, plays here? 
Well, that's probably a little bit of an overplay because then white can um, play like this, Atari on that, and then come out like this, see? And, uh, and black can't, black can't uh, cut here because it'll be captured. So now what this is and the, going to do is, is going to effectively um, um, allow these two white groups to connect, and then this black group here uh, will be under attack once white uh, connects this group. Uh, connects this stone. Okay, so that's not going to happen. Um, instead, black just threatens the the cut from the outside. Okay, so he, black doesn't have to actually use this cut. Just threatening the cut adds a little bit of extra strength for black on the outside. So this is a, a nice stone helping black make potential territory uh, here in this in this area here, right? Okay, good. Now what's happening next? Um, in fact, now black follows up on that idea. So having made these two stones here, plays up here, which now maps a really nice territory here, and also starts to uh, you know push towards this potential white territory, uh, diminishing it. Okay, white says, all right, not so simple. Um, I'm going to plunge right in, threatening a cut here. Okay, so if white place here, then these three stones are cut off and can potentially um, be surrounded and killed. So black doesn't want that happen. In fact, if white plays here, not only are these three stones in danger, but these two um, black stones are also in immediate uh, danger of being captured by this Gaeta type move over here. So, so black is not going to allow that cut. It's generally a good idea not to allow cuts. Um, and now, okay, so white has made this move, sort of thinks of it as a forcing move, okay? Um, so white doesn't mind giving up this stone. This stone is not important because uh, white has forced black to answer. So these two stones sort of cancel each other out. But this stone now is something that white can move towards. And so black is going to want you to take this territory. But now white does this powerful double hane, sort of, sort of kind of a wrapping around kind of thing. Um, that that threatens to 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 uh, say you know come on Atari here and and, uh, and to connect up with this stone that he played earlier. So black is going to first Atari here, and um, and then uh, amateur, an amateur player would, would 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 play here like this. So have a look here. So at this stage here, um, black has a, has, a, has some options. Okay. Um, black wants this territory. So one way of getting that territory would be to play something like this. Okay, that's solidly making all that territory. But unfortunately, that means that this stone here is you know, pretty close to being swallowed up. And you're sort of given white a framework for a very big territory on, over here, which is just as big as the one that you just made. So black, being a high-level player, uh, rather plays here, which is... A daring move, I suppose. And so what will happen here? Um, so white plays here. Now this threatens um, to capture the stone. So if white plays here next, he can capture the stone. So black is going to defend against that. And this move also prepares uh, black for linking up with these stones by playing here. White comes out here because he doesn't want these two stones, these cutting stones swallowed up. And black pushes out here because black does not want white to be able to connect these three stones now to, to this group here. And he's also sort of threatening to come around and encircle this white group. So this is what happens in, in these games, that you have all these, these different groups sort of vying to surround each other and to, to move to the center. Okay, so white would love to, you know, play a move on this side, but white would also, you know, want to, to come out here to prevent black from surrounding him. And this is the more important, white does not want black to surround him, so he comes out here. And black doesn't have the strength yet to capture these stones, because this stone here, these two stones are very weak. Okay, and um, but now black has a chance to strengthen them, because, okay, he has time. And now these three white stones have to come out, because otherwise uh, this black move here is going to kill them. So white comes out with a, a jump, a one-point jump. So this is pretty interesting. So now black is wanting to, to, to pull these guys out. 
Okay, we want to pull these things out. We also like to separate these stones from, from this stone here. Still like to attack these stones here if possible. Wouldn't mind coming through here, separating these stones and, and these ones here on the side. Okay, there's lots of things that both parties would like to do. So Black starts by playing this move here, preventing an easy linking of this group here with this group here. Okay, white comes here. Okay, and the white plays here. Okay, and now um, black has a chance to, to run out here. If um, black connected here, that wouldn't be very good. Then white could, could essentially capture these three stones on a very big scale by, by playing here himself. That would be not very good. Okay, so um, white forces... Okay. White is still wanting to make some territory here, okay? And he also wants to prevent this black group from easily making an eye shape. So he's going to drive this, this black group out. Uh, but before black does that, uh, he plays here, which threatens a, a cut here. So this threatens the black playing here, white playing here, and then black cutting and then capturing these four stones, which would solve uh, black's problems on this side. So white answers that by uh, connecting now that's connected and now black also answers uh, here because that's a huge territorial move and still maintains the pressure on these white stones so, so black has some further uh, play down here if, if white doesn't um, do something okay so the, the way white sort of defends this is he's playing here that's i guess good enough to to ensure that these white stones can, can connect over with this one here given that black is still uh, weak here Okay, so Black wants to still connect, and he does it in this sort of, um, okay, it's a little bit hard. This is a, involves careful reading on the parts of these players, so they're making moves here. Um, so, But Black ends up connecting, making what's called a bamboo joint. Okay, It's a way of connecting this group of stones here with this group of stones. You see there's two sort of parallel things. So if White plays one of them, Black can play the other one. So these, are, these two stones are, are completely... Um, uh, connected. So that's a little bit um, more efficient than, than playing here. Uh, this move here doesn't have it same, as much effect on, on this uh, stone here. Well, well this one here uh, more or less forces white to, to come out here because otherwise black is going to um, surround him. And then we have black uh, playing here, threatening to take those white stones. And now black has enough of a breather, okay? So black doesn't have to defend this if white connects or disconnects here, then black can just push out here. So, so these stones are just barely, you know, hanging in there for now. And now black can turn to playing here to put some pressure again back on this white group. So if white get, black gets another stone, say somewhere around there, then these white stones are all um, encircled and pretty close to, to dying. Okay, so white is going to um, deal with that, but first he makes a sort of forcing move. So if white, black plays somewhere else, then, then white can play here and, uh, and either take these two stones or connect. So um, black responds here, okay, to prevent white from sort of connecting. And now white plays over here. This is kind of high level play, I think, on white's part. So making this outside move, forcing black to play this move here, which is really not worth anything territorially. But this um, this additional stone here on the outside has some potential, you know, in this direction, helping white move in this direction. So, and now white has to uh, connect and, and does it with this clever move. So um, probably black can't actually disconnect this even um, if he tries and see what happens. Okay, black says, okay, fine. I'm now going to ensure the safety of my connection so that now these stones here are nicely connected that's a nice shape and now i'm pretty close to this wall now black can um, be much uh, safer heave a sigh of relief because now this uh, black wall that's so close to here basically almost ensures the safety of this of this um, black group especially with this strong move but now this white group here right this group group here uh, is uh, looking seriously um in need of some support so white is going to play here leaning on these black stones which are not entirely connected yet 
and we get this following little exchange. Okay, so black connects here, now probably resurrecting the possibility of a, a, a cut, cutting off this white group again, because now black could push through here if white doesn't connect. Well, before white connects, he plays this forcing move. So if black, you know, cuts through here, then white's going to play a tar here, which either captures this stone or captures these three stones. Okay, so black is forced to play yet another sort of interior move that doesn't do him any good. And um, and now white uh, plays this way. You say, wait, can't black disconnect him? Well, what happens if, if, if black plays like this? Here, and then white can easily connect um, with, with these stones because there's this, uh, there's these doubles, two stones. So that's that's no problem. Okay, good. Um, and now black plays here because black is still wanting to put pressure on these these white stones here. They don't have uh, two eyes yet. And black has thickness here. Black has thickness here too. Okay, so black wants to attack this white group very strongly. That's, that's a very strong desire that he has. Okay, so how is white going to deal with that? White is going to play here, which moves in this direction towards these friendly white stones down here and also makes something of an eye shape somewhere in here. Okay, so it looks like white has sort of one eye. Okay, uh, black wraps around, plays what's called Hane at the end of two stones. That's a, a vital point in this shape. And um, white plays here, so maintaining a connection. And black now comes over here wanting to ask White, are you going to defend on this side or are you going to allow me the possibility of perhaps breaking through here at some point? Well, White has to defend his three stones. So that's just a forcing move. And now Black plays here. Why? Well, because now you see this additional strength that White has gained with these moves here would make it possible for, for White to play somewhere like here, okay? And and maybe look towards the, the weaknesses in this Black wall. So Black wants to prevent that and, and ensure this connection between this group and this sort of flimsy looking wall. And also, it also has the effect of, of still casting an eye on this white group, right? This white group is not out of the woods yet entirely. So um, it's a, a safe and solid move, uh, this one here. A white plays this um, big Atari. Okay, Black is going to defend that. And now White says, okay, um, you're going to connect, but I'm just going to uh, sort of push you a little bit so that I'm, I'm making some potential uh, territory or at least more eye shape uh, in here. Okay, what Black doing? Black is playing here now. Okay, the aim there is probably um, now that's now a, a solid connection between these stones and these stones. Well, another one of these bamboo connections. So now Black has the possibility of playing here which may, uh, might be able to disconnect these stones here. Okay, and White agrees with that analysis. White says, okay, no problem, I will, I will connect, okay? So White is now connected. Does not want White to wrap around here and, 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 and separate these stones from, from these ones here. So Black plays here, okay? Which leans on this stone a little bit and it makes some nice shape um, with respect to the cuts here. Okay. White's going to push out here, and Black defends this this cutting point, which is which has been looming for a long time. So this is also a move to solidify Black's shape. So Black is now um, in a much stronger shape there. Okay, White uh, plays this free Atari. Black defends, and White plays now here. Why does White play there? Um, well, if white plays somewhere else, um, then probably black still has some potential um, yeah, to do something like this. So if black plays like this, then uh, white more or less has to connect here, and then black can play here, then white has to sort of connect here, and then black can play here. So also wrapping around, um, reducing the white territory to, to bear five or ten points. So that would be quite painful. Um, so to prevent that all from happening, white plays here. And 
Okay, there's another reason for this move, which is a little bit subtle, having to do with um, these stones, the stone here. So, you see, if black, if black plays somewhere else, and white, white can do the following. Whoops, sorry. If black plays somewhere else, say over here, um, then white could do the following: uh, push through here and and cut. Okay. Now, um, this cut is a difficult thing for for black to deal with because if black uh, takes the thing on this side, then black, well, he could take this stone. But now white can can um, play here. And black can no longer make this connection because this is going to be a tar and kill those black stones. Okay, so um, so what would happen in this case is black would whose turn is um, yeah if black plays here um, black would have to say defend here and that's going to be awkward because then white gets to play this move here and black has to play here and then white has to play here and uh, gets to play there and then and, and basically black um, loses uh, the corner territory if, if white connects so this is a huge territorial difference so the result of all that is that after uh, 124 black actually decides to play here so eliminating that possibility of this embarrassing cut here uh, and re reducing the, the the bad potential that that white has perhaps by a uh, poking through down here. So white, white has this move here, uh, which is annoying. So if black wants to um, play like this, then, you know, if, if, if white can disconnect here, then maybe he uh, can try to capture uh, these stones, you know, something, something like this. Okay. So, so black has, no, not black has played over here. Great. Okay. Now what? Um, white plays here. That's to, you know, and prevent black from coming through here and spoiling his eyes. Um, black plays here. White, white, oh no, white does not do that. White plays over here. It's a more uh, more efficient a way of preventing black from coming in here. And, um, and then black captures this stone. White takes this big move, which also threatens to cut here. Black prevents that. And now white makes some forcing move here. Black has to respond this way too. Black comes through here and makes this forcing move first. Okay. And none of these players wants to um, directly yield to the other in terms of forcing moves. It's sort of a question of spirit. And uh, and then white plays here, and black connects. That's almost a connection. Yeah, that's that's a connection. And uh, and then white makes this big move, preventing uh, black from taking that stone. And now white might be able to attack this this black corner group. And to prevent that, black plays there for two eyes. And we have white playing out here, and black plays here. White. We have another exchange here, just uh, black moving towards white's territory, white preventing him going further. Here's an important move that um, threatens to come in and white blocks and then the white has to protect that thing. And, um, and then black pulls this move out, stone out, and white comes here, threatening to connect, forcing move here, black answers. And so at this stage here, white realizes that, that black has him entirely circled, encircled pretty well. Um, so if, um, yeah, white, white, if white, uh, say, plays here, for example, then, then black can play here. And then there's a cutting point here and a cutting point here. So either way, black can prevent this white group from, from connecting with these guys. So that means that white has to ask himself, well, uh, is this group alive? And you see this shape here. This shape is this five shape. 
okay, a square with an additional finger. And that's um, a shape that's alive only if white plays here. And that is, in fact, white's next move. Is white then um, sort of having made a move, few moves in, in the direction of, of, of connecting, once black says, no, no, you, I'm not going to let you connect, then white has to go back and basically waste a move and, in fact, fill in one point of his territory. It's not something that white wants to do, but white has to do it because the life of the entire group uh, depends on it. Okay, and then we have some uh, some extra end game moves. So black plays here, white plays here, white uh, goes there, black white plays here. Uh, there's a question of life and death here, so this sort of helps this group here. Um, and uh, then black plays this move here, and white plays here, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of the record. Okay, so that's the end of the the recorded game, but we are told that. Black, Riggen, wins this game, okay? So let's see if we can um, very quickly try to uh, suss out roughly how much uh, territory each person has. So here's Black's big territory up here, okay? So it's uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 uh, across here. So 10 times 2 is 20, uh, maybe 22. And then there's, uh, okay, uh, probably uh, 2, 4, 6, eight, 10, maybe, maybe uh, 10 points here, so 32, um, maybe five points here, 32, 37, um, maybe 10 points here, uh, 47, 47. Okay, how many um, points does white have? Two, four, six, uh, okay, maybe seven, uh, seven points there. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, uh, 12, and um, four, uh, 16. So uh, 16 and what we say about seven, so that's like 23, um, maybe five points here, that's 28, uh, maybe uh, 10 points here, 28, uh, 38, okay? Uh, black is ahead. And so black is gonna win this game. And, uh, and that's a very early game that we have a record of between two uh, very fine players. I'm the lover.